All right. Good morning, everybody. Hopefully, um, I'm going to be able to make it for two hours here. As you can hear, my voice is not very good, but we're going to do what we can do. So today is day 65. We're going to go over a couple of React apps, one where I built rock, paper, scissors, and another one which I took off the internet but made modifications to, which is a to-do list. So we're going to go over both of those. Tomorrow will be a lab. Just so you know, here's the plan for next week. On Monday, I'm going to again discuss your e-portfolio, your final project that you have to do. All right, I will again demo the use of MobiRise. I will demo how to go and save something to Netlify. I will demo how to save something to GitHub Pages. That's the first thing we will do. Then for the rest of next week and probably going into the following week, we're going to have a code along exercise. I'm going to code and I'm going to ask that you do what I do. It'll make more sense next week. All right, Mr. Gunmisted is going to send me all the requirements this afternoon. All right, so that's what we'll be doing next week and probably into the following week. The last week of class, which is uh, the week of the 18th, I believe. Yeah, that whole week, I am not planning on lecturing. So that will be time for you to work on both or either your electronic portfolio or this code alone project we're going to do. Or if you're behind to catch up on any work, you're behind it. All right, just so you know what's going on. So again, the final was due last Monday. You can still turn it in, but you'll lose points. Your completed portfolio will be due Wednesday, 1220, which is three weeks from yesterday. All right. And again, I'll be off tomorrow. I'll give you the dates for this code along exercise on Monday. All right, so let's get going. I'm going to show you first the first one we're going to build. I've gone back and I've recreated rock, paper, scissors, and I've done it using React. So I'm going to show it to you first, and then we're going to go build it. <laughs> now, one of the things that you're going to see when I run this is I've added a GIF in there. And if you say, what's that? You'll see it at the top of the program. There it is. So it actually just a little bit of animation in there. Now there is still an issue with this. It works. So if I choose rock. In a couple seconds, the computer make a choice. There's a draw. All right, that looks OK. I choose paper. All right, the computer chose rock. The computer wins. But see, it, it made an extra played an extra game and I can't figure out why it's doing that. And I'll choose scissors. So notice user wins. So there's that one little error in here, but the rest of it works. And again, everything I'm doing right now, I will put out online. Now, one thing you may or may not have noticed in these apps that we've been doing is I kind of hand did some of the CSS, because if you look here, this doesn't really look the way I want it to look. I don't want the buttons to look like that. Right, I don't like the way this looks. All right, but one thing that you can add when you are working with a React app is you can add Bootstrap. We're going to do that next week when we have this code along, and the stuff that we'll do will look nice both on a big screen like this, and it'll look just as nice when we shrink it down. All right, so I'm going to kill this. I'm going to stop this.
All right, and I'm going to just start it up right now. So when I say start it up, I'm going to build a new one right now. So I'm going to make an empty folder in here. <coughs> All right, and this folder is going to just be called RPS for rock, paper, scissors, react. And there it is. Of course, there's nothing in it. So I am going to come in. I like doing it this way. Do my git bash here. I'm already in the folder that I want. So I'm going to type in npx create react app dot, which means make it right here. And you'll see within a, a minute or two, this will start really filling in with stuff. I've got the package.json, the node modules folder will come soon, etc. I'm going to go over this one. We'll see how long it takes. I'm going to do the other one, and that's going to be it for class today. So we'll, we'll again probably be done no later than uh, than 10 o'clock. My doctor has advised that I not talk for more than two hours in a row because he said you're good, your, your voice is just going to go. So. Um. When we get our happy hacking down here, it's ready to go. There it is. OK. All right, now you already know what I'm about, some of the stuff at least that I'm about to do next, so. There's my RPS React right there. I'm going to open it up with code. There it is. Again, I'm not going to run it, but if I did now, it would just show the React logo. OK, so let's get rid of the stuff we don't need. I'm going to go into source. And I'm going to remove app test. I'm going to remove logo. I'm going to remove report web vitals and set up tests. All right, just delete them and they're gone. In order to do that and make this work, I have to make a couple more changes in the app.js right here. I have to remove that logo. Okay, we don't want that there. Plus, I'm gonna write my own stuff in here. So I'm gonna remove this. And just to make sure it works, I'll just put the word hello in there. So when we run it in a minute, hopefully it'll come out and say hello. All right, and finally, I've got to go into index.js, remove this web vitals from here, and remove this web vitals from here. All right, so file save all. Let's see if we run it now, if we get the word hello out there. And there it is. OK, so we're good to go right now. All right, so I can start adding, quote, regular code, unquote. I don't have to put anything in the index.js file. We're going to put everything there into app, app.js. Next week, when we do our code along, we'll start by putting stuff into app.js, but then we're going to add other files. All right, so I can close this. So the only two files in here that I'm going to have to dink with, so to speak, are going to be app.js and app.css. All right, the index.css, this is what I get from React. I'm not touching that. So I've got app.js, and I'm going to make a few changes now, ads, et cetera, into app.css. All right. I have mentioned this to you before in that as we go in here and start writing this, okay? This is all the stuff for the logo. We just remove the logo, all right? So I'm gonna get rid of all that, okay? And just start writing. Okay, now 
I did I, that text align center. That's just fine. In fact, I want to do the same thing for divs. So I'm going to also say for divs, center align them. All right. OK, now I'm going to have a header up at the top of my document. All right, so I'm going to put in here a dot app. Header. And this whole thing collectively will be about, I don't know, 20 more lines or so, 20 to 30 more lines. I want this to take up the whole screen, so I'm setting the minimum height to 100 VH, the whole view height. This has a little bit of responsiveness in it because I did add the display flex, the flex direction column. The align item center. The justify content center. And the text color will can be white. All right, that's all the stuff for my header. I'm going to have buttons in here. You already saw them. So for my buttons, I want, I made it simple. I want the background. In fact, I want to add one more thing here. Let's add a font size. Let's see, what is that for? Now that's for the header. I'm going to leave that alone for now. All right, so the buttons will have a background color and they will be black. They'll have a font color, which will be white. They'll have a width of six rem. OK, padding. One rem margin. One rem. I want them to be center aligned as well as possible. And I added some margin right in there because I had to push them over a little bit. This right here is why it's not fully responsive. It looks it'll look good on a big screen, but not so good on a smaller screen. All right, I made a class that I called centered. And then finally, I've got for my H1 tag. <laughs> all right, so that's it for the CSS. Again, you'll get all this. I'll save it out there at the end of the period. All right, so let me do save all and let's come in here and start writing some. JavaScript code. All right. Now, first thing I want to make sure, yep, I'm bringing in app.css. That's good. All right. Now, let's see. Okay. I'm going to I'm going to bring in three more things here and we'll go over them in a minute.
All right. What this is, is this is the GIF where it looked like you'd had two hands that were playing the game. I don't yet have that in here, so I'm going to make it right now. So in my source folder, I'm going to add a new folder that's called assets. And in that assets folder, I'm going to bring in, I've already got a working copy of this, so I'm going to bring in that. Um, I'm going to bring in that that image. All right, so there I've got it. And again, that's like I said, that's just this. Okay. Right now, you may or may not be able to tell this is kind of grayed out. A bunch of these are because I'm not using them yet. As it says, their logo is declared, but its value is never used. That'll be used in here in a bit. All right. Now, I'm going to explain something to you, and I'll just tell you, you're probably going to forget it. I know the first time I heard it, I forgot it. All right. What we have been building all week in here are what are known as functional component apps because they use functions. All right. There is another way that you can build apps in React that are called class component apps. Why are we using function components? They're newer, they're simpler to work with, and they're recommended for use. That's why we're using them, all right? Just so you're aware of that. Not only that, there are two ways of writing this line of code that you see right here. I can write it like that, or I can come in and write it like this. like that, and then put in a curly brace. So if I do that, I can get rid of this one. Why am I taking the time to tell you that? Because if you look, this is one of those arrow functions that we have been using for most of the semester. All right, and it's just another way of doing the same thing. There's nothing at all wrong with the way we've been doing it, this is considered the newer way of doing it. All right. Now, as always, our program is going to be split into two sections. So this will be our program logic section. And then down here, this will be our display section. All right. So everything that we put in here is going to be all the stuff for the game the rock, paper, scissors game. What we put in here is what we want to display on the screen. Right now, it's just the word hello, as you know. All right, and we're going to change that shortly. But let's put in the logic first. All right, I'm going to put in a whole bunch of these state variables that we talked about the other day, probably six or seven. <laughs> and literally, that's the choice that I'm going to make when I play the game. But remember, when we're playing this, we're playing this game against the computer. All right, so I'm saying I have no, I'm not setting anything, neither is the computer to start with, okay? I could put the empty string in there. I could put the word null in there if I wanted. Either one of them would work, all right?
We'll make this one null just to show that you can do that. That's going to be who won the game. All right, but I've also got to keep track of three other things here. How many games I won, how many games the computer won, and how many times we tied. So that's the next three variables here. Now those are counters, so I'm going to set those to zero because right now we haven't played yet, so the user has no wins. The computer has no wins. And again, since we haven't played yet, there have been no draws or ties. I just call them draws. Now, I'm going to put something in here that might not make much sense, all right? Let me put it in and then we'll go over it. Hopefully what I just put down made sense to everybody because when you play a game of rock, paper, scissors, I didn't put the equal sign there. You've got three choices. Whether you're the user or the computer, you can choose rock. You can choose paper or you can choose scissors. All right. We'll use those a little bit later. Choices. All right. Whenever I click the button, whenever I click the button, one of these buttons, basically what I'm going to want to do, so if I start the game and I click rock, the button that says rock, well, if the computer's already made its choice, I don't want to see it first because I, otherwise I could win every game. All right. So I've got something in here that I called handle click. So this is going to set my choice. All right, then I'm going to wait for a couple seconds. And after I do that, I'm going to get the computer choice. Now, these are things I'm writing in here. All right, why am I telling you that? OK, I'm telling you that because. What I name them is just what I happen to name them. All right, so again. I am setting my own choice. I am getting the choice from the computer. That's why I use the names in there that I used. All right. All right. Now I've got to come in here and I've got to get my choice, or I'm sorry, get the computer choice. Now, what I'm gonna do to get the computer choice is I'm going to come in and I'm going to make the computer give me a random number that's either a one or it's a two or it's a three. If it gives me a one, the computer chose rock. If it gives me a two, the computer chose paper. If it gives me a three, the computer chose scissors. So that's what I'm going to write right here. And since I created this 
And since I made up here this array with three elements in it, it knows that I want a number between one and three. All right. Now that I've done that, okay, so now I've gotten the computer choice. I can set the computer choice. And with what? With this right here. This has got a one or a two or a three in it. All right. Now, I'm going to call use effect here, and we'll go over this in just a second. What this is going to do is it's going to call determine winner. But it knows it's smart enough to know, to know not to do that until I have both a computer choice and a user choice. Because if I didn't have both of those, how could I determine a winner? All right. All right, there's just a little more JavaScript in here, and then we'll write the actual stuff in here to display it. So how do I determine the winner? Well, my guess is probably all of you have played rock, paper, scissors at one time or another. Now look at, just think about it this way. I'm gonna put in here a blank, something blank. So let's say that I choose, I choose rock and so does the computer. Or I choose paper and so does the computer. Or I choose scissors and so does the computer those are the three occasions all of those are going to represent a draw or a tie nobody won because we both chose the same thing all right well when does the user win if i choose rock and the computer chooses scissors, I win. All right, if I choose paper and the computer chooses rock, I win. If I choose scissors and the computer chooses paper, I win. And if I reverse those, it's really the same thing. So if I say that I am first, then in this case, well, let's just put them in like this. All right. Now, I could make this real tough and say if user equal rock and computer equal rock or user equal paper and computer equal paper or user equals scissors and computer equals scissors. What does it mean? It means that it's a tie. What I did instead was I combined these two together and I made a word. Rock, rock, paper, paper, or scissors, scissors. And if it if the user choice plus the computer choice equals one of those, what do I know? I know that it's a tie. All right. So to write that, Oh. 
So again, I know if it's any of these, well, I can set the result, and I'll set it to the word draw, or you could use tie if you wanted to, it doesn't matter. But since I called it draw, now I'm gonna set draws equal to draws plus one, and I'm gonna break. So again, if we both chose the same thing, the result is a draw, and I wanna add one to my draws counter. And hopefully at least, that makes at least a little bit of sense. All right, so I can put here, oops. Check for draw or a tie game. All right, so that's the first ones. I'm not done yet. Now I have to check, and I, it doesn't matter which one we did next. Here I check for computer wins. All right, so that would be a case of scissors, paper, or a case of rock scissors or a case of rock I'm sorry this let's see it's paper scissors scissors paper rock scissors paper rock And I'm gonna do something very similar to what I just did. All right, I'm trying to move this down a little bit, see if it'll let me, there we go. All right, so here, what did we do? We did this, but it's not a result anymore. Now, back now that I look at it, I didn't do computer first, I did user first, but it doesn't matter. All right, so user wins. And I want to set my user wins to user wins plus one. And break. Finally, now I will check for computer wins. The computer's the second one here, remember. So the computer has scissors and I have paper. Yeah, I'm just gonna copy this over. All right, so now the computer wins. So I want to set the computer wins to computer wins plus one. Now, normally, it's a good idea to have a, a, a default in here. This should never, ever, ever get hit. But just in case it does, I'm just going to say break. If somehow that happens, just get the heck out of there. There's nothing more to do. All right, so that is the determined winner. So we have now handled everything and we just have to come in and display. All right, so we'll get rid of that hello that's in here. There's not real much to put in here. All right, probably about 15 or 20 lines and we'll take a break. All right. We'll look at the program first, and then we'll take a break. So,
I wanted the stuff in here to be centered. This is going to bring in that logo or the, the, the GIF where the two hands were playing against each other. All right. Like I said, I really didn't do much in here with CSS, so I put a, I literally put a line break in there. Now, I'm going to put in two or three lines of code that aren't going to make a lot of sense. What these lines of code are going to do is these are going to build the buttons. Those lines of code are going to build the buttons. All right. Now, could I manually put them in there, use a button tag, do another button tag, and do another button tag? The answer is yes. But I'm going to use a built-in function that exists. It's a JavaScript function that is called map. returns a new array, but what it does is it goes through your array and it does something to every element that's in the array. I want it to go in and go through, I want it to go through choices that we did way up here, and I want it to build a button, one that says rock, one that says paper, and one that says scissors. Now, it may not sound like, I mean, you couldn't have just done it by hand. Yeah, there's only three of them. But imagine there was a whole screen full of buttons. All right, if there were 20 or 30, this would be really painstaking to do it like that. But doing it like this, it doesn't matter how many I have. So to do this, I come in and I say, choices, which is the name of my array, dot map. And then for each element, which I'm just going to call choice, all right, for each index that's in there, I want to do something. What do I want to do? I want to create a button. We'll fix that in just a moment. All right. Oh, what doesn't it like? Button. because I am missing here. All right, so it's telling it to go through the choices array, work its way through here, every single thing that's in that array, so every array element, and remember there are three of them. There is rock, there is paper, and there is scissors. So for each one of those, all right, I think I'm missing here another parenthesis. We'll fix it in a second. 
For each one of those, create a button. That's exactly what we're telling it to do. Nothing more, nothing less. So choices.map, choice index. trying to figure out why it's giving me an error here because the code I put in is actually the correct code. Releases. Races.map. Choice index. That's correct. Button key equal index. That's correct. I'll click equal. That's correct. Choice. That's correct. And your button. That's correct. <laughs> Oh no, I don't want that there, but I don't know why it's giving me an error there. All right, but now it's saying declaration or statement expected. I'll look at this during the break, but if I can't get it to work, I'll give you the working one. It's not a big thing. All right, now this is going to basically set up the board or whatever you want to call it for me. Then I want to come in here and underneath that, all right, so underneath that, I want to come in and I want to show my results. I want to show one. So, Um. OK, I'm looking here and when I did mine, I did not have a div class name equal app. I just returned this. That still didn't fix my error, though. Still an error right here. So when I run it, I'm going to get an error because of right here. All right, so what I'm going to do, it's a little early. It's 8.50 but I'm going to give you a break till 905, figure out this error. We'll come back, and talk about it, talk about the whole program. I'll explain to you why I brought a program in with a map function, and then we'll go on to the next one. So I will see you at five after nine. Be right back.
Boom. Um. Mm-hmm. <laughs>
All right, it is 905, so I'm going to start back up again. This is the GitHub repository from yesterday, just so you know. GitHub.com slash JP Scott Rankin slash three more React apps. And that had the Rick and Morty one we did first, then the weather one we did second, and finally the movie one we did last. At the end of today, I'm going to make another one that's going to be called two more React apps. It's going to have the first one in it that we're doing now, the rock, paper, scissors, and the one we'll do next, which is the to-do list. Now, let me show you what was wrong on my to-do list, on my rock, paper, scissors, rather. Right, where is it? Right, right there. That was, I made that a curly brace. That should have been a parenthesis. That's the only thing that was wrong with this. All right. Now, up on top, I had this as two different lines. I had an import React, or I had an import use state from React, and I had an import use effect. You can combine them like this. And I just put it out there just so you could see it. All right. So if I do my file, save all, again, in here, in our logic section, all right, we had a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Six of these were state variables. That's these six. Anything that starts, it's got a name and then has set something is a state variable. This was a string array. used to create button the create the buttons all right this as it says right here basically this was to handle button that was clicked how do i know that it's called handle click and we told it down here that whatever one of these buttons that we're creating now, when we click them, call handle click. So it'll call handle click and it'll know, oh, I press the rock button. Oh, I press the paper button. Oh, I press the scissors button. All right. Again, as the name implies, this will basically, actually I've got, get computer choice and set computer choice. The reason that we've got that, see that set computer choice, that 
is this. Right there. Okay. So I didn't want to call this set computer choice because I'm already using that name. So I called it get computer choice. All right. So generate random number one to three representing rock, paper, or scissors. All right. Set computer choice to this. All right. Here, we now have both the user choice oops, and the computer choice. So call the determine winner method, function, whatever you want to call it. All right. This is the determine winner. And then this is where we displayed everything. Now, I didn't spend much time on it, but the reason that I put this in here and rewrote this to use a map is the project that we will work on starting next Monday will make heavy use of the map function. And map is not a React function. This is a Java script function. Remember, everything that we write between the return here and that end, everything that we put in there, this is called JSX. JSX means it's basically HTML that you can put inside of a JavaScript file, and that's what we're doing. So everything is in this div right here. We've got our title. We've got our picture, which has got the two hands going up and down. We map to create the buttons. And then depending on what button was clicked, we handle it. Then we give out the user choice, the computer choice, the result of that, how many user wins there are, how many computer wins there are, and how many draws or ties there have been. That's it. All right, we export default app right there so that inside of our index.js file, we can use it. That's what we're displaying, and that is telling it to display the results from our app.js file in document.getElementById root, which is in our public folder in our index.html file right here. So if I come in and do a file, save all, and I run this, there it is, and again, it's got a little hiccup at first. It should be giving the result right away. It does that, but occasionally it plays one more game. Haven't figured that out yet. But now notice rock, scissors. I chose rock. I won. Paper. Paper, scissors. The computer won. Scissors. And notice there's a draw in there before we even did anything. So something is being called more than once. I don't know what it is. But it's not terrible the way it is. It wouldn't take probably real much to fix it. All right, that's the first one. So let me stop the run here. All 
All right, I'm going to exit from here. And this is my thing that's called two more React apps. I'm going to drag this right into it right now. Tell it to move it there. It'll take a couple seconds, but that's OK. No, it didn't take real long, did it? All right, so let's create the to-do one. I'm going to do this one more deliberately, slower, right from the get-go. All right, and this is what it should look like if it works when we're done. So let me bring it up. See, I call this one RPS React. Change the name of this one for now. The TD React, okay. This is not mine. Somebody else, I found this out on the internet and I made some changes to it. All right. So let me bring this one up and just run it for you so you can see it. <coughs> there are some problems with this one too. All right. There it is. Got kind of an ugly background. I found a to do one, but I don't really like the way it came out. So I can take anything, and if I've completed it, I can check on it or uncheck it, very similar to what we did before. Let's say I don't want to say build a to-do um, app in React. I want to say build a rock, paper, scissors app. I just double click on that, and I can put in rock, paper, scissors, and I move off, and boom, that's been changed. If I don't want it anymore, I can do that. And it's gone. I didn't put buttons in to remove it. We could have done more than, than what's done in here. All right, so that's it. I'm going to start, so let me stop the run here. All right, I'm going to... Same kind of thing as before. I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call it to do dash react. I'm going to open up that folder, bring up my git bash here. Oops. and do my npx create react app. I will tell you that create react app is old for computer stuff. It's about five years old and there are potential problems with it. When we create our project next week, we're probably not gonna use create react app. All we do is put in a different command. All right, so give me hit enter. It should start creating it momentarily. There's our happy hacking, so we're ready to get started. So I can exit from here and I can bring this up now. Inside of code, here we go. As I've been doing all semester here since we've been working on this, I'm going to come over to here. I'm going to remove app test, the logo, the report web vitals and the setup tests and click delete right there. 
All right, I'm going to go into my index.js and remove this report web vitals from here. And from here. And in my app.js, I'm going to remove this import logo. And finally, I'm going to grab everything that's in here. And I'm just going to replace it with words to do list. And I want to make sure that I haven't missed anything. So let me save that. And let's bring up a new terminal. And I'm going to do my NPM start. And it should say to do list on here. If it does, we're ready to go. And there it is. OK. All right, so we're going to get going right now. And as I've been doing in the past, usually I write the CSS first. All right, there's a lot of CSS in here. All right, so what I've decided to do was to go into, I'm going to grab my, my finished product. I don't think you want to see me type in 100 some lines of CSS. So I'm going to go into my app.css file. I'm going to remove everything that's in it. And I'm going to grab from the working copy I have, and I'm going to grab the app.css. Back first, let me grab, uh, that's fine. I'll open the app.css. And as I said, that's not the one I want. I want the CSS, not the JS. There's 98 lines. I just think it's a waste for you to watch me type all that. It's not even that I mind doing it. Like I said, to me, it's just a waste of your time to have to watch me do something like that. All right. So I just pasted it in, so we've got all of that in there now. Okay. Now, under this background, it's got assets to do JPEG. Okay. And I don't have an assets folder, so let me add that. And that's not what I called it. Let's see. I did call it to do that JPEG. OK, good for me. All right, that's just that background, okay, right there. That's got all the to-do stuff in it, okay? All right, so that's done. So let's start writing this. I'm gonna write it a little more incrementally. In other words, we'll write it, we'll look at what we've done, and then we'll write some more. All right, so let me come back into here. This, hopefully this is done already, but let's see. All right, I don't need the index. All I need in here is my app.js. And again, I'm gonna remove this right away. All right, oops. All right, I'm importing this, that's fine. I'm also going to import React from react now that gives me access to most everything that's right underneath react some books will tell you you don't need to do that anymore that that's automatically done i just do it as a safety measure for lack of better words all right i'm going to go back and check on the working one because there's one line of code in here i want to look at Okay, it's totally fine. All right. So we've got that. We've got these two things in here. Now we've got our function app and our return statement. Okay. 
and I've got my div class name equal app. So I'm going to start writing my code in here. I'm going to write the presentation code first. All right. This out of the way. Well, this is that's what I wanted to look at in here. I don't know if I renamed this or not. OK. I'm going to remove that image for now. I'm not sure if I'll need that there or not, so. We'll just keep this right now. We'll put an H1 in here. Whoops. And it'll say to do list. All right, kind of what we had in there just a second ago. Now we're going to come in here and outside of this div, we're going to add a form. This will be an unordered list, and this is where we're going to have our to dos. Yeah, that looks good to me. Oh, except I need here that ending parenthesis. I do need that. Why does it like it? Because I didn't put one here. All right. Still complaining. because it looks like this. There we go. All right, so I haven't done a whole heck of a lot right now. All right, but let's take a look at it. It's not going to be functional at all. Notice it compiled clean. OK, you can see to do list. And it's way too big. This is it at 100 percent. Right there. Well, you can already tell I'm going to have to change the colors in here, but I'm when I put in my background, when I get that to work in a second, that'll change. All right. Right now it does nothing, but it is in here and I have my type. OK, and I have my CSS, so I've already done quite a bit, to be honest with you. All right, but now we have to come in, come in rather, and actually add our code. Now, why am why am I doing it like this? As I mentioned before, this is the program logic section. That's my words. That's not an official thing or anything. And this is the details section. Well, every other one we've done so far, 
we've written the logic first, but you don't have to. All right. And again, the other thing we've done first is we've written our CSS first. You don't have to. Just like when you're writing a quote regular, all right, a quote regular CSS program, I'm sorry, a, a quote regular website. You can do the CSS and then the HTML, then the JavaScript or whatever order you want to do it in. All right, so in here, I've got React, but I'm also going to need use state. Now, for some reason, it works fine if you do it like this. But for some reason, you almost always see it with a space here and a space there. I have never read any place where somebody has explained why you do that and what is the rationale for doing that. All right. But. All right, we put in that is called that use state is called a use state hook. State allows us to track changes inside of our program. And the to do list can change often. You can add a new, new to do, you can update a to do, you can delete a to do, you can click that circle where it's going to put a line through it saying that the, that the to do has been completed, or you can click it again to make that line through it leave. So uncompleted to, to, to do. So that's why we are coming in here and we are adding that. All right. So in here, first thing we're going to do is we're going to come in and we're going to, similar to what we did before, in the past we've done this. Const to do's, set to do's, and we set something like this, equal use state, and for example, this, which means it's an empty array. That would be fine to do this. But what we want to do is when we start the program, we want there to be a couple to do's in there already. You don't have to do it that way, that's just the way it's going to be done here. All right. So what I'm going to do is exactly what we have here, but I'm going to break this up over multiple lines. All right. And I'm going to put in here the following. So I'll put about three of these in here. All right, I don't want them to say the same thing, so. <clears throat> All right. And I'm going to say the first one is true. It's been completed and the other two have not yet been completed. Now, you have to initialize, this is the hook. You have to initialize you state. We could have put zero in there or an empty array or whatever, or even null, but you have to give it some type of initialization. All right. So when it starts, when you initialize state with use state, you define two values, what are called the getter and what are called the setter. That's the getter, that's the setter. Should be obvious because the second one has the name set in it, all right? What that means is, The first value that's in there, to do's, that means that's read only. And this is write only. So you read this, you write it here. All right. 
we're going to have two pieces of information for each to do. The name of the actual to do itself. All right. And also whether the to do has been completed or has not been completed. All right. <coughs> Now, if I do this, file, save all, and I go back and run it again, I don't know what it's going to look like right now. That's what I thought. We haven't yet wired up the to-dos that we just added. All right, we'll do that in just a second. Now, as of right now, as we go through this, this is what's displaying. Just that to do number one. Well, we want to do more than that. Now, if you remember on the program, we just went through the rock, paper, scissors. We used a map in here. And we used that map to create the buttons. Here, we're going to use that map so it displays all of our to dos. All right. So it's going to be very similar to what we did before. I'm going to remove everything that's in this div. All right, everything that's in there. Oh boy, put your fingers on the right keys. And here we're just using I, we don't have to. All that is, is it's a variable that's going to be changing, you know, each to do. Hmm. Okay, we have the same problem I had before. Probably did the same thing. I did. There we go. Now, if this works, we'll come back and look at it, but if this works, now when I run this, what should happen is it should display those three to-dos. So it should now have buy groceries, wash the car, and write React app. Let's see if indeed that's the case. And there they are. All right. I'm not able to do anything with them yet. I haven't gotten that far. But again, the map function is a common function. It's used a lot in React. It's used a lot in JavaScript programs. So we're looping through the to-dos array and we're rendering or showing the HTML for each array item. This was the checkbox, even though it should have been probably called radio button, but that's okay. And this was the content. This is signifying or will signify if the to-do is complete or the to-do is not complete. All right, okay. 
So, so far, again, what we're going to be writing very shortly, what we're going to be writing are going to be called, what are called CRUD apps. This is what we'll start writing on Monday of next week. CRUD is an acronym. The C means create, even though it's usually put in as insert. All right. The R is for read. The U is for update. And the D is for delete. And the reason I'm showing you that is we now can read. All right. What we do next is up to us. We're going to do create next so we can start adding some to do's hopefully to this. Then we'll do update and then we'll do delete. All right. OK. Excuse me for just a second. Sorry, I've got to take a drink. <coughs> 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 All right, we're going to come in now and we're going to write up here, okay, not in our detail section, but up here, we're going to write some more code. All right, so the first will be a function that we'll call handle key down. All right, and we'll have the event and the letter I, which is just a placeholder. <laughs> now, in English, what this is saying is, all right, if I want to put in a new, uh, if I want to go in and put in a new to do, I put it in, I hit enter and it should put it into the list. Now I'm calling here, create to do at index. I haven't written that. So if I ran it right now, I probably either get an error or it wouldn't work because there's no code in there for it. So let's write that down below. All right, so we're going to write function, create to do at index, not a real long function. All right, well, I'll put it down and then we'll go over it line by line. <laughs> now, what you're seeing in this line right here, all right, what we're seeing in this line is we're using a spread operator. This is representing the array. Do I expect that to make sense? Well, if you do go back into your JavaScript book and you look, I think it was like chapter 15 or 16, all this stuff that we're going over, the map and the spread and the rest operator, they're all explained in there. We did go over them in class, but we went over them quickly because we've never done anything with them. We're starting to do stuff with them now. Again, we're going to go over every bit of this in just a moment. All right.
All right, that's everything. So like I said, it looks fairly complicated. And if you've never looked at this before, yeah, it is. All right. So we wanted to see, we're saying right here, was the enter or return key pressed? We do that by checking the value of the event. And this is the key that was pressed. If it's enter, we call this. Because what we're saying is, we want to create a new to do. All right. And the way we're going to create a new to do is the first thing we're going to do is make a copy of our current list of to do's. We're calling it new to do's. All right. Then using the copy, we insert a new empty to do at the end. That should be a comma. Whoops, not like that. That. There we go. All right. And you can even leave it off there. It won't really matter. All right. Now, spell that wrong. That's the word splice. So what this is doing is it's going to insert a new empty to-do after the last one that's currently in there. All right, that's why we need to pass the current to do index into the function. That's I, the current index. After we insert a new to do, we have to update the original array to include our new to do. And then we set the focus to the new to do. All right. And again, I'm not even going to ask, does that make sense? Because when you're first working on this stuff, it takes a while to wrap your head around it. So let me do a save all. Let me go back into here. And it says I have an error. So let's see if we can figure out what the error is. E is not defined. I know what that error is, and we'll fix that. Lines 23 and 35, so let's fix both those. Line 23, that should be EVT, not E. That'll fix one of the errors. All right. And let's see. says here new to do's was not defined. Why? Because I called it new to do's with a little D there, and I gave it a big D right there. So that was both errors on my part. So let's do a file, save all. Let's run it now. Notice it worked. So I'm gonna come in here and do my NPM start. Now I should be able to add a new to do. If it's going to let me do it like this, no, it's not. Let's see. Well, I'm missing something, and as of right now, I don't remember what it was. Let's go on to the update. We'll do the update and the delete, take a break, and then I'll come back and fix, fix the insert. All right? Because I don't remember what it was. Or I can go back and look at the the uh, final copy, but I'd rather do it this way. All right, next we wanna be able to update a to-do. So we've got create to-do. Well, under the create, let's put in another function that we'll call update to-do at index. <laughs> So this is going to allow us to add, or hopefully we can get that to work, add a new to-do to the list, the to-do list. All right, and this one is designed to edit an existing 
to do. Again, we're going to make a copy. And you might say, OK, fine, why are you working with a copy? We're working with a copy in case something gets screwed up, because if something gets screwed up, we're not touching the original array until we're sure everything is working. Then we're replacing the original array with new to do's. And that's how short it is. Again, we've got two parameters in here, the input event itself, which is EVT and the index. Again, we make a copy of the to do's array so we don't have to worry about manipulating the original. Within the copy, we change the value of one of these to do list elements and then we update it. So let's see, let's see if that one works. Oh. Boy, what this is sure it's fantastic, isn't it? I'm missing something very simple in here, and I don't remember right now what it is. All right, let's go on and do the delete. Then I'll figure out what it is, and we'll come back and write that. All right, so right now we've got add new to do to, to the to do list with a create to do add index. We've got an edit an existing to do element or whatever you want to call it with an update to do it index. And now we're going to put in a remove existing to do list element. All right, so we'll put in function remove to do at index I. Now, a couple things about this, just so you know. When we work with this stuff, this is creating something that didn't previously exist. This is showing us everything that does exist. These have to work with something that exists. You can't update something you haven't created yet. You can't delete something that's not there, all right? So if the to-do list is empty, just return. <coughs> so here it's not empty if we get down to this point. I'm going to put this over multiple lines. Oh.
there. And I should do one more per in here. Okay. Let's see if this one works. None of the rest have been, but let's see if we can get this one to work. Something in here is keeping that. I don't know what the problem is. All right. Again, it's probably something simple, and that's why I can't figure it out. All right. Next, we have to be able to complete it to do. And when you complete it to do, the idea when you complete it to do is when I click here, it should have a line through this, meaning that it's done. All right. All right. So let's do that one. Then we'll see where we are time wise. And if necessary, we'll take a break. Well, we're going to have to put some code in here because what we want to be able to do is if we click it, we want the underline. And if we click it again, we want the underline to go away. So let me close a couple of these here. All right. And the first thing that we will do is we'll come up here. We've written all our CRUD stuff. So we wrote a create. We wrote an edit or an update, a remove or a delete. All right. So let's come in here now. And we'll call this, this will toggle the completed status between completed, which means there'll be a line through it, and not completed. All right. OK. All right, this for lack of better words, for lack of better words, this is kind of a light switch. And what I mean by that is if the to do has got the line through it and you click on it, make the line through it go away. All right, 
And if it is not, then add the line to it. And that is everything. So I want to go through here and look at the code from top to bottom. See if we can figure out what the errors in here are, why it isn't working. All right, we've got our import react, use react. All right, I'm going to add the background during the break and our app CSS. That's good. There is our state variable. Again, I just gave it three values. So what should happen is when we run this, and it's not right now, I don't think, but we can look. Is this one's completed, so it should have the line through it. Oh, lovely. All right, I'll have to fix those, but we will. Let's fix those right away. Oh, I spelled it wrong there. Temporary tot dues instead of to dues. That should we get rid of all the errors, I think, except for one. Oh, I got rid of all of them. But that isn't working either. Doggone it. Okay, we're going to fix it right now. All righty. Use states, app, that's all okay. The handle down, and E down, I guess. Enter, we need a new to do this, yes, that's correct. Whoa, okay, I missed a little bit of code here, so I'm going to put it in right now. Basically, what this is saying is if I remove everything from the to do, remove the to do itself. All right. So create the new. This is going to create the new blank one. All right. Okay, that's good. This was the update. That is correct. Oh, this is the remove. Oops.
Right? That should say complete. And index. That's correct. All right, so I'm definitely missing something in our details section. We'll figure that out and then try to run it again. Okay, this is where my errors are. Right in here, so. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. To try to expedite this and save a little bit of time. Rather than me manually changing all that stuff. Come back to this. This is the working one. And I'm just going to grab everything that's within the form here. Copy it to the clipboard. And remove everything currently within the form. All right, let me see if it. If that fixed it or did not fix it, fix it rather. Start. Son of a gun. Still not doing anything. All right, it is 1006. I'm going to give you 10 minutes, nine minutes. Let's come back at 1015 and I'm going to show you the one that works and we're going to see if we can figure out what the error is. See you at 1015.
Boom. All right, let's just finish this up. And what I ended up doing was I ended up copying in the working one, but not much has changed in here. This is the wrong one, but we'll bring in the right one. There it is. All right, 
So as you saw, pickup dry cleaning. No. Oh, OK, this was the original one. So we can change them back, but it's all fine. All right. I think I had in here buy groceries. And something like wash the car. Might have been get a haircut. I don't remember. And then it was write a React app. So what should come up then when this runs is this should have a line through it. This should not. This should not. <laughs> and there they are. All right. Notice the toggle now works. If I keep removing stuff and I remove all of it, it does the remove. I can update. All right, etc. And again, I can turn them on and turn them off. So. The handle down again was just if they hit the enter key. What does that mean? All right, again, let's go back to the program. And if I put my mouse there and I hit enter, it's made a new to do. There's nothing in it yet. I can remove it. I can put anything I want in it. And now it's saved. I can come back to it. And now it's going to get ready to add another to do. All right. So if the enter key is pressed, create the new to do. By calling the create to do and it's putting it in basically right where we are right where we were so notice if i'm here and i hit enter it doesn't put it at the bottom since we're using the index it just moves down what was there one and now we can write you know whatever we want to write in here all right again if it's the backspace key and there's nothing more to remove then call the remove to do. All right, the create we've already talked about. We're making a copy. We're adding the new one in at exactly where we just were. We're setting the is completed to false and it's empty. You already saw that. So if I did come in here and change this to true, for example, which would be kind of silly, but if I did do that, and then we ran it again, in fact, we shouldn't even have to. If I come back in here to the program and hit enter, you'll notice that it's checked by default. So if I start typing in stuff, it immediately looks like that, which doesn't make a boatload of sense. And that was why when we set it up, we set that to false. All right. So we're working with a brand new to do list. And we're finding where the new to do belongs. We're putting it in there and then we're updating the original to do list. When we update, we're again working with a copy and the reason we're working with copy on here. All right, if you remember to do's is the name of the array, but that's our getter. And what that means is you cannot manipulate that directly. It's a getter, it's read only, which is the reason we're doing it the way that we're doing it. And to remove the same kind of thing. We're removing it and we're getting rid of what was there. And I believe it's gonna set the focus to the one right above where we just removed. So if I come in here and do this, 
there it is. And the toggle you've already seen. Now, where I had problems was in here. Now, a couple things. Please remember this section in here that I've been calling the detail section or whatever you want to call it. It doesn't really matter, but that's what I called it because that's where we're writing out the details. The stuff that exists between this return and this end, all right, this is JSX. This is JavaScript with extensions, all right? So we're, we, we've got a bunch of divs in here. This div is going to hold, for lack of better words, this is going to hold our heading that says to-do list. Then most everything else we've got is in a form. All right. And in that form, we're doing a much more complex mapping than we looked at previously. And what we're doing, notice in here. All right, to do is completed and is completed. Well, what do we want to do then? All right, we're basically ferreting our way through this list and we're telling it that if a to do is completed, we want to add that check mark. That's what this is doing in here. All right. When we click the key down, we want to call the handle key down function, which was up at the top. We have to check for the enter key. Because we want to go on to a new line then and be able to add a new to do. All right, if we change anything in there, okay, then we're in the middle of a to do, so we're calling the update. To my knowledge, that's everything. All right, now for some reason it didn't like what I just did, and I think I know why, but Close this. Oh, I know it's much because that's still open. Exits. So there is no homework this weekend, all right, uh, other than being working on your e-portfolio. We'll go over the e-portfolio again on Monday. And we'll start on this React project. It will be expected that you're going to code along with me for the React project because you're going to have to turn it in, all right? And as soon as this gets done, I'm going to add this to the GitHub repository. Again, there's no reason you really have to watch this. But if you go out. There will be two more React apps that get that'll be out there in just a couple minutes and it'll have everything from today in it. That's all I've got. All right, I'll talk to you on Monday. Have a nice weekend.